This video is about definite integrals. Previously, we found indefinite integrals, which don't have bounds or boundaries or limits. Those are all terms for the same thing. That is, they have no bookend points. An indefinite integral is going to be written like that, just that little symbol. A definite integral, on the other hand, does have endpoints. So a definite integral is going to look like that, except it's going to have something down here. And it's going to have something up there. That's a definite integral. The lower limit is written at the bottom, and the upper limit is written at the top here. A definite integral is then evaluated using the limits. Now, here's the thing. When we're doing that, since the integral's lower limit value is subtracted from its upper limit value, and the constant c appears in both limits. See, if you put the constant c in there, you have to apply it when you're evaluating the upper limit, and you have to put it in there when you're evaluating the lower limit. And so you end up, you can see this little equation right here, the upper limit that includes the constant minus the lower limit that includes the constant, you can see that the constant of integration falls away. So if you have a definite integral, you don't really have to add that plus C at the end. If you have an indefinite integral, it's most appropriate to put that in there. All right. So let's do a little bit of work with a definite integral. Let's write the calculus or the differential definition of acceleration. And then let's move the dt to the left side. So the calculus or the differential definition of acceleration is acceleration is dv dt. We talked about that earlier. Now, it asks us to move the dt to the left side. So that's going to give us a times dt is equal to dv. Now let's show our intent to integrate both sides of this. And we're going to do this by putting an integral sign on the left of each side of the equation, and we're going to write the limits. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to integrate a dt, and we're going to integrate dv. All right, now what are our upper and lower limits? Well, that takes us back to this graph right here. You can see that the time starts at 0 and ends at some later time t. So those are the limits of integration there. And the velocity starts with an initial velocity, and it goes up to a final velocity. So that's what we've done there. We're going to integrate a dt for all of our little t's from t equals 0 to t equals t. And then the velocity goes from v naught all the way up to vf. And sometimes when we write this, and you'll get used to this as we go on, sometimes we don't write this t equals t t equals. We don't write the t equals part. Sometimes we just put a zero there and a t there, and over here we'll put a v naught and a vf. But to be complete, I'll go ahead and put those full limits in there. Let's complete this integration and show how it yields kinematics equation number one, which is right there. If we integrate this, what are we going to get? If you integrate a dt with respect to time, don't you get a t? In other words, it's a multiplied by no t almost, and then now we're going to power up. So we're going to increase the power from essentially 0 to 1, and we say, oh, the limits are from 0 to t. And on this side, when you integrate dv, you get v. And those limits need to be evaluated from v0 all the way up to vf. Now, when you evaluate the limits, basically what you do is you go a, and then you put t in this expression, and then you put 0 in that expression for t. So I'll go ahead and show the full work there. Over on this side, you put vf in there first, and then you put minus v0. So it's the value of the function at the upper limit minus the lower limit. Upper limit minus lower limit. Now, that's going to be just nothing. And can you see that? If we rearrange that, that does, in fact, give us the exact same thing as kinematics equation 
number one. So there was a little bit of weird stuff. For those of you who aren't yet familiar with calculus, just bear with us. We'll show you more examples as we go on. But that's one way that calculus relates to physics.